For a bunch of people in a mental hospital, there's a lot of decent sense making going on. Welcome everyone to another round of the Me at Mortals book reviews. My name is Kyron and I do these reviews for those who want to transcend beyond their own mere mortality to dive deeper into the books and get some observations, a quick shortened highlighted version of the books that they're reading. And today we have a little bit of a crazy one for you. It is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. This book was published in 1967 and it's about 400 pages in length. So it's a decent sized book. And this is an, I would say, an exploration of social stigma, overbearing control, and fighting for the defenseless. So um, this is narrated by the the chief, as he's called. I think it's Chief Bromden or Broden. And he is um, a Native uh, American who is confined to this mental hospital. And he's sort of the perfect narrator because he doesn't really speak with people. Everyone thinks he's a dumb mute, but he's very observational. So he gets to talk in his own mind and doesn't really have too much interference of him interacting with other characters. Although this does come on a little bit later on, it's not, he's almost like a perfect narrator because it is just the thoughts inside of his head. Um, and he watches as the new admission to the the mental hospital, Randall McMurphy, sort of battles it out with Nurse Ratched. So it's kind of uh, it it's, it seems like a relatively simplistic story. It's like you know the order and control of the the mental hospital is being broken up by this new wild character, and this is a progressive fight that with both sides winning battles. So you'll see when he comes in, like he plays some tricks. Uh, on her, she gets her back back at him by you know forcing others to to question him and his wild gambling ways, and then he wins another battle by grouping them all together and sort of forming like a little mini protest. And this just goes back and back and forth until the end of the the novel, which I will not um, reveal here. But some things included are like a fishing trip. There's the the shock therapy, the battle over the TV to watch the baseball, and also the uh, I believe, like the rec room to be able to play cards and, and things like that. So we'll talk a, a little bit about the author in this book before getting onto the themes. And this book is really acclaimed um, for for being a masterpiece. It is in a lot of people's top 100 of all time um, and has also been made into a movie. If you're looking at the book cover here, you can see we've got um, Jack Nicholson poking his eyes out over the on the cover. So the not only was the book very influential for being a, a fantastic book, it got translated into the movie and the movie did extremely well as well. I believe it won you know, sort of all the Academy Awards and stuff of its time. Um, the context it was written in was also very particular as well. Like I said, published in 1967, and this was era the era of um, sort of deinstitutionalization. So there was a lot of people unhappy um, about the amount of institutions being created, the sort of conformity that was being put upon the American people at this time. This is an American book. Um, the the psychedelic movement was in full swing right then, uh, as well as the hippie movement. So you had all of these sort of combining forces coming together, which I think pushed this book into um, uh, a place for its time. So it's important just to remember that why this why this book might seem more uh, influential to many people was because of the the context of when it was released. But let's uh, talk about combining we'll go on to our first theme which is the combine and so this is squeezing everyone down to size until it can't so uh, for those who don't know the a combine is sort of a tractor type device and it's um, it's used to in, in farming uh, machinery I don't know too much about it I, I know that general aspect of it and uh, nurse ratchet is the substantiation of this so an individualization of a powerful grouping force. So you could say the the, the combine, uh, and this is coming from the the chief, who is the one who's been in this mental hospital almost longer than anyone else, and has seen the the power, the work of 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 the of the combine, and in particular this substantiation of it of the nurse. So the combine is sort of like the overbearing power of 
the government and public opinion, social stigma. I would say something like that. It's something outside of you. It's You can kind of feel it, but it's hard to point at just one thing and say that's the combine. It's more the series of effects it has on an individual and that is the combine to, to conform them. And Nurse Ratched is is basically the the person of if you could form uh, the combine the the factory equipment the machinery into one person it would be her so she's very restrictive she's trying to mold everyone and and fit them into their place and make sure that this system is is running smoothly and that there is no perturbations there is uh, you know she's trying to create order from chaos is is how i would say it and so how how does she try and achieve this goal? Well, she bullies people, um, not in a physical sense, although she does have the power to um, ask her the, her the, they call them the black boys, which is sort of like the, the three uh, Negroes who are working in the hospital as somewhat janitors, but also to, res- to, to physically restrain patients and things like that. Um, but also with her words. So she is very um, yeah, overbearing with people. Um, she's constantly monitoring them from her, her little glass panel uh, where she looks out at them and there's machinery everywhere and you can hear it ticking all the time and uh, monitoring people's conversations and what they're doing and why they're behaving way in self, very self-different ways. Uh, she's full of self-control, so she tries her best at, uh, um, to, to I guess, like accept the fight to, and to not let it get to her emotionally. She is, she is trying to create all this control and all this order and she can't herself be a nervous wreck or anything like that. So when um, the McMurphy plays like a trick on her and uh, does something that is maybe a bit scandalous, such as um, potentially walking around naked with a towel on, um, only a towel because his clothes got stolen and things like this. You know, she tries to keep herself in control and not be surprised or moved by this. Uh, so, and she's always finding weaknesses and exploiting people. So, the the patients who have a stutter or who have maybe some sort of sexual hang up, she'll dive into that and not only her, but they'll have these group sessions where it's like a, everyone sort of ganged up on the other people. People are encouraged to snitch on other people if they say or something weird or do something weird in this in this book, um, and it's it's really interesting to see that she, the way that she acts and the methods that she uses uh, are, are quite effective. They they really do beat down these these people in this in this mental hospital, and you can see why this is having such an effect on them. Um, And the funny thing is she barely plays even with the other cogs in the machinery. So you could say that the, the mental hospital itself was a, the institution was part of the combine, but she, she doesn't even get along with the doctors uh, or anything like that. She, she molds them. She beats them down just as much as she does the patients in many ways to get them to conform to what she wants and to, to get, uh, you know, her ideal, perfect sort of assembly line like you you do this thing you go in this place you know shaving time is at this time in the morning everyone has to do it no matter what your reason is for not wanting to do it at that time things like this and then we have mcmurphy and so what what is he well he's almost like the rock in the engine or the cog that that slips loose and and messes up everything the cog in the gears so when he comes in he is a a brash, very like self-confident, muscle-bound, uh, you know, speaks his mind, loud, arrogant on, in many ways, um, very independent person who's dealing the cards and he's grifting out for, for his own sake and, and, you know, the reason he's in the mental hospital was to avoid farm, like uh, farm work, I think it was, which he would have had to do as part of his parole or something like that. So, um He's very out for his own and this just, when he comes in, it's almost like Nurse Ratched sees immediately like, oh, I need to mold him in particular because, uh, you know, he's, he is just so far out there on the independent scale that we can't, we can't have this. We can't have an individual. He needs to be part of the, of the machinery and play along with everyone else. So the, 
the novel ends with somewhat of a happy ending, but there is a price to be paid. Um, and the price is paid by McMurphy. And we really do see his internal battle as he sort of goes between uh, looking out for his own sake and then realizing somewhat that this combine process is going on and realizing the effects it's having on all of his new friends and him sort of realizing like, okay, where, where do I fall upon this category? Should I help them out? Um, but this will necessarily affect me and hurt me. Um, and in the end, his encouragements help everyone else to sort of break free of the process because they're all actually in there voluntarily, um, apart from him. The, everyone else is not forced to be in there. They voluntarily choose to be in there because they, they can't handle society. But the, the real truth of the matter is they, they were sane, fit enough to handle society. It's they'd been broken down so much by the nurse that they thought they couldn't. So he almost needs to become the martyr for the others. And I, I won't go into the details of, of how he does that. Uh, the other main point theme I wanted to go upon was institutions. So what happens if order goes too far? So we've got the combine and then we've got the, the institutions. So um, funnily enough, this isn't the scariest example I've, I've seen of, of like an institution. Um, the nurse Ratched is still very much a human. So, you know, when, um, when McMurphy uh, sexualizes her and things like that, she gets, still gets embarrassed you can see all of the individual. It's relatively easy for him to to break um, the system. Literally, he breaks a bunch of windows and, and things like that. Uh, the abuse is relatively minor in, to, in terms of physical abuse. Um, and it's certainly not like the bell jar, for example, uh, with Sylvia Plath's novel about electroshock therapy and the uh, I sort of like continual beat down of, of her mental process as she goes through these uh these electro uh, ect uh, est electroshock therapy um and it you know the 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 institution itself breaks down at points they are there are leeways they are allowed to go out on a fishing trip uh it's not this overbearing control like you'll see in a book like 1984 or something like that um and it's funny because the the institution is part of the combine and the combine's trying to create this order from 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 nothing, I guess, and it's it's in particular it's trying to create order from craziness. So I guess the question is, what is what is craziness? Um, and you could maybe say it's like irrational irrationality or incomprehensible behavior, something along the lines of that. But in this case, it seemed they were just different people. They didn't seem particularly dangerous or aggressive. Um, many of them were beyond help in many ways and so needed them to be some sort of institution. So I'm talking about, uh, you know, people who literally couldn't even feed themselves. Yes, you can sort of understand that, but um, the that's for the chronics, which is one half of the patients. The acutes, on the other hand, are people who have some sort of debilitating, not debilitating, but some sort of mental process that's stopping them from perhaps being fully functional in the world but they've been shoved aside completely into this institution. And for me, I would have just said they just seemed different. You know, the guy who had a stutter, the, the guy who had some sort of, you know, sexual hangups and things like that, uh, McMurphy, even the chief who just came from a different land, they all just had different parts and, and things that were harder and different for them. So they weren't necessarily uh, crazy per se. So we we have the, the combine, which I would say is more like the process. So this is the process of trying to create order um, from from chaos. Uh, and then we have the institutions, which are the actual infrastructure and machinery. And from these, you could just continually ask some why questions. You know, why why these people in particular? Well, I guess you could say because they are powerless. So um, you know, versus. Uh, people, maybe let's just say like the African-Americans or versus uh, another country or versus a river, all of them seem to have ways of fighting back. But when you are um, mentally beat down, when you when your mental processes aren't so sharp, you can't think of the ways to fight back. So this might be one of the reasons why 
uh, in particular, this this group of people was was focused upon. Um, you could also ask why why order in the first place? Why why is this? Why does the combine exist? Um, and so there's all sorts of ways you could keep going down with this. I'll maybe save a couple of my thoughts on that for the end of month recap. So if you want to go to that and check that out, I'd uh, I'd recommend that. But yeah, that, those were the two main themes that I, I got from this book. That there is, there seems to be some sort of overbearing pressure and power to get people to conform. Um, and one of the ways that it does this is through institutions, and these institutions are, are made is like machinery. And so this is where you can see, you know, the way the setup of the hospital is, the types of people, i.e., nurse ratchet, who are called into to lead this and why you will have institutions for certain types of people, um, for, for instance, um, and they're usually the people who are the most powerless to defend themselves against that. A couple of observations and takeaways before we go on to the summary. Um, the scene of the doctor meeting reminded me of the psychopath test by John Ronson, which I have reviewed upon here previously, which essentially had a bunch of the doctors coming down. They, they've seen that Mick Murphy's starting to cause trouble and they're trying to decide what do we do with him. And one of the doctors is actually saying, does he even need to be here? He seems to be here just to get out of his work duties. And then everyone else sort of gangs against him and says, no, like according to blah, 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 he uh, exhibits these kind of psych uh, psychological, psycho uh, psychopathic traits and he's like the fact that you are even suggesting this is just you know an indication of his power over you things like that and i i found that quite amusing because it does did seem to reflect what was talked about in the the non-fictional book of uh, john ronson where he was going into actual mental hospitals and finding okay there's people here who seem really pretty sane maybe you need to spend more time with them to to see that the effect, but the the psychopathic test, the the psychopath test that they use, is very subjective. Like there's not a whole lot of scientific data and rigorous empirical observations that were used to create this. It was more like one one random dude somewhere just going like, um, this is what I think a psychopath does, and this is this as well, and they do these things and it's like the combination of these things and even if you have a couple well oh, fuck it we'll put you in 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 the in the jail anyway or in the mental hospital and then trying to prove that you're sane whilst in there and that you shouldn't be there is very very difficult so that was one of the, the aspects of the book where i just went man that actually does seem a bit too scarily to real life and then also asking the question how much does that still happen nowadays? How many people are in mental hospitals when they are relatively sane and they just can't get out because there's no way of proving your sanity once you're in there because the very fact that you're in there proves that you're insane, uh, you know, or things along that, that, that line of reasoning. The other main observation I, I had was that the character of the chief was, was really, really good. How did he stay sane-ish? because he basically lived in this mental hospital for so long but pretended to to be deaf, dumb, and mute. And so everyone just assumed, oh, he must be... It was more he came in there and people assumed he was deaf, dumb, and mute, so he responded to their expectations. So he was always observing and watching, and you can tell by the end of the book he's actually a very articulate, a very thinks very deeply... Um, and has a lot of lot of positive qualities. Yet he was he was broken down, and he you know how did he manage to stay sane while, when everyone you know if everyone treats you like an idiot, how how do you maintain your 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 smarts in a way? How do you how do you not just go down to that level of idiocy that they're they're all treating you like you are? The other one was uh, I would have loved. Uh, maybe like a follow-up book or something like that of his observations once he is outside and can see the combine in perhaps in a different light because he's the one really making these observ observations of the 
overbearing power, the social stigma, the, the way that society try and gets you to conform. He was the one making all of these observations. So I would, granted he's in the perfect place to do it in the mental hospital, but he was talking about how these same things happened to his native tribe. And that was the reason why his father uh, sort of became like an alcoholic and, and depressed and uh, all of these, you know, negative things because he was kicked off his own land because no, we, we need that land for a hydroelectric plant or something like that. So I would have loved to have known a bit more about that. Um, perhaps not in this book, but a separate book about that, I think would, would have been really fascinating. So in summary, uh, overall, to be honest, it's a, it's a rather bleak story when you, <laughs> when you, when you get to the end of it. Um, but this, this hits afterwards as during the novel, you're like, man, this is kind of funny. McMurphy, who's going to win this battle? What's the nurse going to get do now? What's McMurphy going to do? Um, it's, it's really is uh, quite amusing. There's a lot of solid characters in this. So that, I think that was what really distinguishes this book. They, they really popped out. There's, there's some fantastic, like the chief McMurphy and, and nurse ratchet are all fantastic characters. I really love them. Um, some, I think some of the impact of this is lost because you are reading this. Well, at least I read this in a different era. So the, while some of the, the same things would happen nowadays, uh, like the, the topic I think of overbearing government pressure of social stigma is, is relevant. It, it has a different tinge to it nowadays, nowadays because technology is involved because, uh, you know, Times change, the words t- change, the, you know, mental hospitals I don't think are as prevalent as they perhaps were in this book. Electroshock therapy is by and large not, not used. Like the abuses don't, we don't have the same abuses perhaps as, as was back then. So uh, I can see why this would be a favorite for many people and be a top 100 book. Uh, but it, for me, it, it sort of lacked the outrage, the the... It, it lacked that little bit of something special that I found more in books like the Gulag Archipelago or the Grapes of Wrath, uh, which treat on similar topics, but they had a way of expressing their, their outrage, the, the deep underlying feelings against this um, in, a, in a slightly different way. So um, overall, I'm going to give One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesse a ser- very solid 7.5 out of 10. Um, I really enjoyed reading it and I would the only reason I didn't give it higher was I think because yeah reading in it in that different age it would have hit a little bit differently but for me it was like mm, this is interesting but it, it it doesn't hit home as hard and so that is it for today my me immortal lights thank you for joining me to this part of the video what are your thoughts on one flew over the cuckoo's nest have you read the book have you seen the movie what did you think of them uh, I would love to know them best place to do that is to well actually the best place is to send a boostergram so that is to to listen to this on a podcasting app but i'll also accept it if you if you write a comment down below because i do get to them always and uh yep if you can do all the other nice things like subscribe blah 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 uh, it it does help the channel a little bit but also tell a friend they're into book reviews say like oh yeah the mere models book reviews are pretty good damn good go check them out and that is it for today so i really do hope you're having a, a fun time out in the world, wherever you are. And I really hope you're not in a mental hospital viewing this because you probably wouldn't be. <laughs> so that's it, Karen out.